Here, Jackie, welcome back. Renee, welcome, welcome. Uh, Mike, oh, Mike, it's a Sunday. That's right. You're able to join us. Delighted you're here. All right. There's the ukulele. Let's play it. All right. Hi, Susan. Um, let's start today with double checking tuning. Um, um, I've got myself tuned up here just seconds ago. So, um, as a reminder for those of you who are newer, um, the time, the, when do you tune up the ukulele? Not once a week, not once a month, uh, not when you got it from Amazon and then that's it. Um, every single time you play, 100% of the times that I played the ukulele when I picked it up, my, the very first thing I had to do was tune it. Uh, after the strings are set and it's been sitting around a while and you're taking good care of it, it will be less out of tune each time, but it will still always be out of tune. So just make sure you're taking time to tune it up every single time you play. Um Oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> good to know. Hey, Red. Zoom doesn't work well for type A's. Nothing works well for type A's. Come on, Red. All right. Here's a G chord or G string. Here's a C string. Here's an E string. Here's an A string. Hopefully your ukulele sounds more or less like that, right? Close enough. Um, I have a couple of private students who will come in and then they spend 20 minutes tuning their ukulele exactly to what the meter says. And uh, I don't personally subscribe to that notion. Get it close enough, let's play, okay? All right, today we're going to talk about the key of C major. We're going to use two songs here. Uh, for those of you who are newer to ukulele, these will probably be quite a struggle. And for those of you who've been around a while, we're going to try to make them a struggle again. Okay, so I want to just be always mindful that just because you know how to play C A, C, A minor, F and G doesn't mean that, that we can't mess it up, right? That we can't make it more interesting, more complex, try to find new ways to do the same thing. Uh, really be thinking about what, being very mindful about what comes out of this instrument um, and how to make it the best artistic uh, representations of ourselves that we can. And um, so let's run through the four basic chords. When we talk about the, the basic chords or the principal chords in a key, it's always going to be the same s arrangement of six. So I'm going to give you a tiny bit of music theory. Take your hands like this. You're going to have five fingers on, on one hand and one finger on the other hand. If I put a C chord on my thumb, then I'm just going to add a letter to each finger. So this is a C, this is a D, this is an E, this is an F, this is a G, and this is an A. Okay, so that's what I want you to be thinking about in terms of uh, how music works together. So if I'm going to play a C chord, the other chords that go with it are D chord, E chord, F chord, G chord, and A chord. Now, there is a couple of um, permutations to that that you have to remember. C chord is fine. The D here is not a regular D chord. It's a D minor. And the same for your middle finger. It's going to be an E minor. Okay, this one's going to be a regular F, this one's a regular G, but this one can also be a G7, and this one will always also be a minor, so it's going to be an A minor. So when I'm putting a song together, I'm using this particular system, C, D minor, E minor, F, G or G7, and A minor. The ones that matter are 1, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, and if you look at your paper right now, the one, the four that I put on there are C, I skip D and E, F, G or G7, and A minor. Okay, it's not an accident. To be perfectly honest, this system works flawlessly and has since the Baroque period. So the, the fact that we're going to be working on Bach and, and Baroque music, um, that's when things sort of got codified into the way Western music makes sense to us, to our ear now. And so those four principal chords are the four 
main chords in, in the songs that you're likely to tackle. Um, that's why there are guys out there, and, you, and you'll know them because they wear a cowboy hat and they have a guitar, and they say, I don't need no stinking sheet music to play music. Uh, and they don't because they're using the 145 system. They're using their knowledge of that to say, all right, if the main sound is a C, then um, somewhere in there there's going to be some Fs and some Gs and probably some A minors too. And that way they can play by ear. Um, there's actually um, some people going around selling ukulele by ear, right? And so, and I think um, it, you people gravitate to that because they think, oh gosh, I don't know how to read sheet music, so I'm going to go do that instead. The, uh, the thing about learning um, by ear is that, or playing by ear, or living by ear, or just doing what is really going to limit you in terms of the complexity of the music that you can play. Uh, you can do, you can turn uh, uh, row, row, row your boat into something really fabulous using that system but you probably can't play really at the very top level i think um to get to those higher levels you really do need to go and get a little bit of knowledge about sheet music some of people will wander through this video they're not here you're not here right now but they'll wander through and they'll be like yeah uh sheet music stupid right um the idea there is not that it's stupid it's just one more way to learn how to do music we got lots of choices well it'd be nice as musicians to know them all and so that's one of those things why we work on sheet music so heavily when you begin part of learning the sheet music is learning which chords go together and that's how they do it is this uh, one four five six minor system um, and so what i want to talk generally about is how it works just in the key of c major um, but we've already earlier this week went through the kids book which is in the key of a major same exact thing as the a F sharp minor, D, and E7 um, replaces the four chords we have here today, which are C, A minor, F, and G. And um, so that's, um, if we went to any any song from Ireland, they're always in the key of D. So that's going to be D, uh, D, F sharp, I'm sorry, D, G, and A, and then B minor is the, is the minor on that key. And so what you want to be thinking about is music fits together mathematically. It's not an accident that our ears want to hear it a specific way. And what we're learning here is really a way to put music together in a very mathematical and predictable fashion. That way, if you do want to play by ear, if that's something that's important to you, and the song happens to be in the key of C, but you're, you're a singer and you can only do, you, it just doesn't work for your voice for whatever reason, you can switch it to D, or you can switch it to F, or you can switch it to G, um, or even A, and um, and and see if it fits your voice better. So that's why having all of those different choices, um, all these different keys is helpful. Also, especially on the ukulele, those keys have very different feelings from them. On piano, you know, there's a little bit of a different feeling on them uh, as you go from key to key. Oh, and pianists would tell me, no, there's a lot of difference, but it's not as pronounced as on ukulele, because on ukulele, when we are strumming or when we're pulling chords out, uh, our our chord inversions, which is how they lay out onto these four strings, is really quite unique, and it's why this instrument sounds so different compared to some of the others um, in terms of what the chord inversions end up feeling like, especially when you have a high G. If you have a low G, that kind of takes some of that out, but when you have a high G ukulele, they have really cool uh, chord arrangements on accident. And so we'll talk about how to change your chord arrangements here in just a second. Let me say hi to a few people that just logged in. Um, Janice, Sydney, from Sydney. <laughs> Sid oh, and then we're doing Waltzing Matilda. Janice, when I do this all wrong, please know that, I did, that it's, we're trying. <laughs> glad you're here. How exciting. Laurel, glad to know you. Um, is knowing the six is a minor instead of a something else, something one just has to memorize. Yeah, Laurel, you do just have to memorize. And, that, and probably tomorrow I'm gonna to post a chart of how to think about keys. Um, the When you do one, two and three are always minor and six is always minor. So it is important. And uh, yeah, so that's gonna be important for us to remember that. Um, hi, Chris. Sound is good. Yay, Kat, welcome. How are you? All right, so let's start with um, running through our four chords, and let's also be mindful that if you already know what you're doing, that it's time for you to up your game, okay? So C chord, index finger, I'm sorry, ring finger is your only choice at the moment, okay? You will almost always do a C chord with your ring finger on the first string. This is our home planet. It's where ukulele players live, okay? 
If you're brand new, a nice, simple, beautiful down strum is going to be satisfactory. Okay. If you are a little bit next level and you want to do double strumming, you're going to take the face of your fingernail. Mm, that part. <laughs> when you're going down and then when you're coming back up, you're going to hit the pad of your index finger. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Yeah, I know. If she said Sydney, Nebraska, we'd be in trouble. All right, let's go uh, and be thoughtful when you're strumming. Um, a lot of new people will strum with their finger, the face of their fingernail pointing up here to the nut, and you're going to get stuck that way. It doesn't, you're just going to get terrible sound out of that. So nice down and up. And also notice it's coming from my wrist and from my finger and not my elbow. We don't, that's not good. Okay, Keep it simple. Okay. If you're a next level player, right? One, two, three, four fingers. One, one. Ah, let me get this where you can see it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you're going to do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And finally, the, the arpeggio level, which is where all things great happen. Um, probably thumb, index, middle. Ignore the top string altogether. Just do thumb on the C string, index, finger, and middle here. Thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index, middle, index. You can try using all four. Thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb, index, middle. Ring, thumb, index, middle, ring. What you'll have a tendency to find is your thumb goes pling, and it just doesn't quite have that same smooth beautifulness that we're looking for if we put our thumb on the on the C string. Okay. Um, now um, let's do four beats of C, and then talk about um, how we get from C to A minor. So you do four beats: one, two, three. For new players, your tendency is to yank everything off and then start to put your next chord on. You don't want to do that. You want to be thinking mindfully, really be deep in thought about, if I'm on C and i got to get to A minor, what's the least amount of work I can do? We are musicians. We are notorious for being lazy and staying out too late. And so what we want to do is follow that up with some actual action that proves that both of those are true. And we want to take our middle finger, put it on here, while our index finger still, or while our ring finger still sort of hanging out there, we want to get this one ready to go. On it goes, and off comes the ring finger. Okay, so we're going to be A minor's top string, second fret. That's where we're going to be. Okay, and again, be mindful that we don't want to yank our whole hand off ever. We just want to go gently from one chord to another. Okay, so we're going to go from C. Now let's give me four beats of A minor. One, two, three, four. Again, don't yank that off. Let's go to the F chord. We're just going to add our index finger here on the second string, middle finger on the top string. Okay. And again, we've just added a finger. Go. One, two, three, four. And if you are new, this is where the fun ends. Okay. Um, you're going to take your index finger. You're going to be mindful, thinking, using your noggin. My index fingers, all it's got to do is go to there. Okay. That's going to be third string, second fret. I'm going to add on your middle finger on the bottom, and we're going to add on your ring finger right there. Okay? So that's going to be our last chord, G chord. One, two, three, four. And then to get to C from here, we just drop the ring finger down, and then we're right where we need to be. Okay? Now, all right. Whatever you want to do with your right hand, this is your moment, okay? We're going to do four beats of each. We're going to go around the circle a few times. What you will find is probably if you're new, you're not, you sort of fall asleep until you get to G chord and then and then you can't get it on in time. So don't fall asleep. Um, be ready with your chord on beat number one when it's time to have that chord on. If you need to leave strumming early, like when you're on the F chord, you may need to leave early in order to have your... G chord on when it's time. Okay, so just be mindful that we are uh, trying to get uh, this um, smoothness in there, um, and we're not doing any. Uh, ukulele players have been around a long time. This is this is our this is our bread and butter. This is the keys that these are the ones that we are get really good at, and we're sort of falling asleep. And that's why those of you who are 
been around a while are thinking about this hand. What do I got to do to make this hand fancier? And I'm going to give you one other to, uh, before we get to the end of this song to make it even fancier. Okay. Now let's make a, 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 a one more mention. I am a hideous singer. I did get some advice on how to get to the right note off, right off the bat, but uh, we we're not going. We, I teach instrumental ukulele on purpose because I don't I don't want to sing, and you don't want to listen to me sing. But you're going to for this song while we get. Uh, get our, our strumming together or our chords together. You're probably working, you, if you you may not need to be working on this, but you probably do need to be working on this. Or if you're new, boy, just doing this is a lot. Let's just make sure that we get a, a nice, steady, even strum. All right, I'm gonna do the intro. Uh, no, we're not. We're gonna, let's go around, let's do our four chords first. Let's do the C chord first. Ready, go. C, two, three, change to A minor. A minor, two, three, change to F. F, two, three, change to G, two, three, go to C, two, three, go to A minor, two, three, go to F, two, three, go to G, two, three, four, and C, dum, dum, da, 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 dum. <laughs> I've heard, I can hear my singing friend. F, Two, three, four, and G. I've heard Alicia Keys. She's better than me. Here we go. C, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, and F, two, three, four, and G, two, three, back to C, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, and F, two, three, four, and one more time around. Three, four, and C, and A minor, and the F, go to G, and let's finish on C. Okay, so I tried to do all four of the different strum patterns. Um, the one thing that you should hear in that is there's some part of your head that's like, well, I've heard this song before. Let me give you what you what you just played. idea is that chord progression is a very 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 common chord progression um, and it's not it's actually just fine to practice getting your chords on in time and kind of fun to get that 1950s vibe going in there uh, this four chord pattern um, goes all the way back into the baroque era and probably even into the early music and re uh, renaissance period where they were putting together the mathematics behind music and uh, this this sort of pop tune or folk tune chord progression is very, very common. Um, let's see. <laughs> I think your singing is getting better. Yeah, it's probably not, but thank you. Um, all right. Now let's go into Waltzing Matilda. And I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out because uh, uh, we got uh, an Australian here in the, in the, in the room and we don't want to, uh, we don't want to shame the country by me singing this, but we're going to do it anyway. All right. So she'll, she'll be fine. <laughs> Waltzing Matilda is sort of the Yankee Doodle Dandy of Australia. They all know it. They're, they're, it's not their main song probably. Okay. All right. Let's run through. I'm going to do the intro and then you're going to do verse one. Okay. With me. What I want you to do is if you're in that place where all of these chords are fine, you've totally, absolutely got this thing figured out, then you are working on right hand ideas. Okay. Notice as we look into this piece of sheet music, right? This is just folk style arrangement that you get at every single ukulele strong. Here's the chords. Here's the lyrics. Somebody is going to sing. It's going to be great. Um, sometimes we're going to be strumming twice. Sometimes we're going to be strumming four times. There's a C chord in here that lasts for quite a while for several strums. If you don't know the song, which most of you don't, um, you're going to be relying on me to tell to figure out when to do change your chords. The key is, is that your brain is so used to listening to music, it's pretty much going to know when you're supposed to switch chords anyway. 
the biggest thing that I find with newer players is you fall asleep on the current chord that you're on and you're not looking ahead to see what your next chord is. So when, if, at the beginning of saying once a jolly swag man, once a jolly swag man. Well, when you're newer and when you don't know the song, you get C something, something. And by the time you realize you've got to get a G on, well, it's way too late and we're already moved on to the A minor. Okay. So once you get your chord on, be ready to go get be just have your eyeballs go right on ahead to the next chord and get your get your brain ready to jump onto that when it happens. All right, um, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. All right, with apologies to Janet, let's begin. I'm going to do the intro and you're going to come in. Once a jolly swag man camped beside a club on under the shade of a cool tree, and he sang as he sat, and he waited till his belief world come a waltzing Matilda with me, waltzing Matilda. Sing Matilda, you'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. And he sang as he sat, and he waited till his belly boiled. Come a waltzing Matilda with me. How did we do? Okay. That was probably, if I was teaching you face-to-face -face in a group class, that's probably 60% faster than I would have done it in a classroom environment. So if you were struggling with that, here's what you know. These are chords you're going to be working on, okay? If that went perfectly smooth for you and you missed none of the chords and everything's great, you're, you're all that, right? Um, be thinking about what am I going to do to make this sound much, much, much more interesting, um, let's talk about survival skills for musicians. When you go to a strum along and you're a newer player, that's the speed that songs are going to go by. And by the time you realize what chord you're supposed to be on, they're already way past you. One survival technique is just play the C chord. It comes up a whole bunch in each of these verses. Just play the C chord. And then when it's not a C chord, don't play. That is an equally musical skill. In my orchestra, we have people jump in and jump out. And then they got to count some some dead measures, and then they jump back in and jump out. That's a very musical skill for all all musicians. I sat and watched um, at the Denver Symphony one night. We went over, and I watched the third French horn. He sat there the entire night, and then toward the end of the night, he played eight bars of whatever he was supposed to play, and then he sat there the rest of the night. So it's not uncommon at all to be able to not play, right? That is something that you need to learn as a musician. And if that's too hard, just play the C chords and don't play the other ones and try singing along with me. Um, verse two, try doing the C chords and the A minors. Add in a second chord. Try getting your F chords on if, if you can. If it's really challenging, just skip all of the G chords, right? We, those you may need to work on in isolation on their own. Um, so yeah, absolutely um, um, one of those challenging things when you're newer. When you've uh, been around a while, I, you know, honestly, that, that business of switching chords that stops being a problem, at least with this set of chords, um, but really getting command and really beautiful and thoughtful and mindful tonality out of this hand is what you're working on. And um, being creative, right? Because you can always, you're always going to be able to get away with this one, no matter how long you've been playing. You look at me, I've been all here a, a long time. That's my strum of choice because it works. Uh, a couple other people just wandered in. Uh, Sue, hi, welcome. Hola. Uh, Barbara, hello, hello, come Come on in. All right, let's do verse two. Again, if that went well, keep doing what you're doing. Um, if it didn't go well, start reducing the number of chords. Biggest thing is to be on the chord when it's happening. By the way, if you don't know this song, it's about a, the Jolly Swag Man. I want you to think of a hobo. He's camped beside a billabong, which for lack of a better way to think about it, is a kind of a, is a big turn in a river and it's real deep. It's going to be deep. That's going to show up here in a minute. Uh, he's under a beautiful kulaba tree and he's singing and he's dancing around uh, the fire, making dinner, making some coffee. And it's his Billy Boyle. Um, if you've been to REI and you bought the thing with the little metal thing that costs 350 bucks so you can heat up a can of soup, uh, that's that. That's 
that's what he's working with. Uh, those of us from Colorado remember the green Coleman uh, suitcase that your dad made you carry up the up the hill. Um, that was that was our Billy Bong, right? That was our little stove that we used. Weighed about 500 pounds, and you know, as a little boy, that was my job. <laughs> that stupid Coleman stove up. Uh, so he's the waltz here. This song is in four, so it's not actually a waltz, but the waltz. He's just waltzing around the fireplace, dancing around, having a great time. The swag man is Matilda at this moment. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, we're going to go about the same speed. You do what you can. One, two, three, four. Down came a jumbuck to drink beside the billabong. Up jumped the swag man and grabbed him with glee. And he sang as he stowed that jumbuck in his dog. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. And he sang as he stood that jumbuck in his tucker bag. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. I got on the wrong line and blew some of my chords, so it, it'll happen. If you've ever been to a strum along or if you've ever been reading your sheet music and you were looking at one thing and you were supposed to be playing another thing, welcome to the club. Uh, that's That happens all the time. Um, um, now, the, the thought process I'm having there is just trying to make sure I'm not falling asleep on my chord. If I'm on the C chord, I want my G chord ready to go when I get there. I want my A chord here to be ready. And I was doing a very simple strum, right? Toward the end, I decided I'm going to fancy it up a little bit, go up and down instead of just down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down. Don't let the internet deceive you. There are no correct strum patterns. There's no rule that you have to follow on any song ever. And so uh, be creative and mindful about what that means for you. You're a musician. You should not be following the rules. And so if you come up with a strum pattern you think sounds great do it and then when some you know dude comes by and says hey that's not the right strum pattern blah um you know let him be him let him do his thing uh it'll probably be a, uh somebody who looks like me who is about my age and tell them that you appreciate their advice and have them move right along <laughs> okay um all right uh here's what's going on in the song down came the jump up to drink beside the billabong so um i know what happens in the song a jump up has to be an animal that can be owned by somebody it's not a kangaroo as we desperately want it to be since this is an australian song uh, and, um, um, boy, we would love to be kangaroo here in America, but it's not. Uh, think of a small goat or maybe a small piglet or something. Um, Janice, I, you probably can tell us exactly what a jumbuck is, but I, uh, the internet seems to be a, a bit of an odds as to what a jumbuck actually is. All I know is it's got to be a small animal that you can own that will fit inside of a bag. So uh, that's what that's what uh, happened. So the waltz here is that the swag man jumps up and grabs this little animal and he's dancing around shoving it in his bag okay that's what's going on in our song all right ready for verse three again if you're fighting the chords drop drop two of them and just pick on and work on just two, uh, the other two or or don't do g chord or only do g chord you know whatever is going to make the most sense for you i'm going to give you this strum pattern but you pick one that makes sense for you one two three four up Came the squatter mounted on his thoroughbred. Down came the troopers. One, two, three. Saying, Where's that jolly jumbuck you've got inside your tucker bag? You'll come all waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda. Waltzing Matilda. Where's that jolly jump buck you've got inside your tucker bag? You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Put your ukulele ring out. Hopefully that's going well. That was a little bit different feeling just doing this. Again, no right or wrong to this. Just, just instead of this or instead of this, I'm going to do this. Okay. 
Okay. We're getting to verse four in the big finish. Let's talk about a couple of techniques that we're going to need to survive. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, in the song, down, down, up came the squatter mounted on his thoroughbred. And in the United States, a squatter is a bad guy that lives in the house that is abandoned down the street. Um, you should think of this rather as a guy who's renting the land. And so uh, the, a squatter would be, you know, like in, a, in the United States, um, you know, they're leaseholders. They'll rent thousands of acres and grow their crops on them. Uh, they don't actually own the land, but they will lease it. And that's who the squatter is in this case. And we know he's rich because he's got a thoroughbred. Those of you who are horse people, know that the horse you had was not the thoroughbred you had a quarter horse or worse which is what i had to grow up on and uh you wouldn't know but i'm a cowboy and um so a thoroughbred's an expensive horse so he's got some money and we also know that because the troopers are hanging out with him right they just all happen to converge there right away they all know they're you know, all these wealthy guys coming to get this hobo and dumbest line of music i'm going to fix this with the greatest line of music in the next song um the dumbest line of music is uh where's that jolly jumbuck you've got inside your tucker bag um i i i I wish that line wasn't there. That just that makes this police sound very, very unwise. And um, uh, so <laughs> please know that uh, I, I have higher respect for the troopers than what they're displaying here in this song. All right. Let, verse four in the big finish. We're going to play verse four. Big finish. I want you to play really, 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 really loud. How do you find the first note? When, If you are singing, how do you find the first note? Great question. It's on your ukulele. So if the first note, first chord is a C, up came the, uh, up jumped the swag man. So the first note, up, 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 that one sounds good, up jump the so it's going to be in the chord probably oftentimes it's the third in the chord so this we're holding a c chord c e and g are the notes that we're holding um c up jump the swag man that's you're going to mess around let your ukulele help you um that's what kathy taught me the other day she says hey man that first note get the first note right and everything else is going to follow along pretty well and so in this case if my first chord is a c it's probably going to either be C, uh, 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 there's that note, uh, that's not the first note I'm looking for, or is it this note? It's not that note for sure, right? So use your ukulele to help you find that first note. It's going to be in the chord almost, almost always, and so just grab the chord, start plucking around until you find the, the chord, or the note that sounds like the best one to start singing with. Um, all right, First four, we'll sing just like we've been doing all the others. Then when we get to the big finish, let's play louder. One of the, my things I know about most ukulele players is you're hiding out in the basement. Right now you're in your basement. Um, you've got the door closed. You're hoping to heck nobody's listening. Uh, your family long ago has abandoned you to that basement. They're kind of glad you're down in the basement themselves. And the only one who ever comes down there is your cat, right? And he's he's... He can tolerate the ukulele, um, but that's your biggest fan, right? And so you are busy playing quiet all the time, and you don't want to make any mistakes, so you play real quiet. Let's do the opposite of that. Big finish. Let's, let's make some noise. Try to break this microphone here. Try to blow the internet. Do what we need to do to play. make some noise, okay? And then when we get to the end, there's a tremolo on here. Now, all ukulele strum along songs in it a tremolo. We don't, we don't know why. It's just funny. So that's what we do. Take your open palm, bend this down, okay? And you're going to be doing this. It's from the wrist, not the elbow, just from the wrist, up and down like you're opening a doorknob. Big finish, hands up. And that's the Eddie Eddie Van Halen finish, right? Big finish. Boom, right? Be careful when you come down, you can wrap your knuckles on the side of this. I teach all teenage boys that, hoping that bam. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm rude that way. But the idea is you, you can see just by that, it looks like I'm just really flying like crazy because my hand gets all blurry in the video. Um, that's how Jake Shimabukuro got famous. He was sitting in Central Park playing. Uh, while my guitar gently weeps, and it was back when there was only 480 de uh, definition on video, and he's playing that, and his hand is so blurry because you you can't even see it, and he's just doing this, and and at the mo at that time back in what was it 2000. Three, two thousand four. Uh, that was miraculous that somebody could play a ukulele that fast. Well, you can play it that fast, just just you. 
Okay. All right. Last tent, last one. We're going to end with a big tremolo and an Eddie Van Halen finish. Okay. Verse four. One, two, three, four. Up jumped the swag man and came into the billabong. You'll never catch me alive. Splash. And his ghost may be heard as you press a Piece of cake, a uh, piece of cake is not a piece of cake. When you're first learning, that is a very hard song. What I noticed, well, I teach this song on night two of my six-week intro class. Um, I, everybody in the world starts with C, A minor, F, and G on the first night of ukulele class, and it's a mistake. So on night two, after I've already introduced them how to play melody, then we talk about chords, and um, that G chord is a problem. Right. And so we, we so by the so we fight our way through it the first night. By the night six, it's no problem at all anymore. If teachers, those of you who are out there teaching, and so many of you are running groups, this is your G chord, right? Index, middle, ring. You're gonna have 30% of your students. I've done numbers on this, about 30% of your students are gonna want index middle finger up here and ring finger down here. It's much more comfortable for that 30% of the students. And they are going to fight you and they're going to say, this is so much more comfortable than the way you want me to do it. And you say, you 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 don't touch them because we're in that world, but say, I know it's way easier to do it this way, but I have to have you do it this way because of some stuff we have coming down the road. Okay. And I promise they've got, they really do have to make, do this chord, this shape, because we've got that chord as its buddy, right? The D7 is its buddy. And, we, and, you, and more importantly, we have lots and lots of bar chords like this lovely D chord that's sitting right there that you, you do not want to have to redo all of your fingering to get to that D chord. And so when you're teaching, just make sure if you see somebody with their middle finger here on a G chord, it feels so comfy to them. We got to get them into their discomfort zone on that particular moment. Uh, very, very, um, the one thing I see that you could really mess somebody up by just ignoring it and let that G chord go. That's not something you want to do. All right, let's see. A few questions, maybe. Uh, Mike, are they going to... Uh, uh, all right. Oh, just talking about colleges. Awesome. Um, let's see. Um, let's talk about... On the bottom of that page, you have Soft Kitty. We have a, a uh, instrumental version of this over on Jolly Roger Ukulele, so for now, we'll skip it. Um, turn the page really quickly for me. Let's talk about Kookaburra, which happens to have the greatest line in music ever written, and uh, we'll talk about that real quick. Uh, the Girl Scouts, identify yourself. So all Girl Scouts seem to know Kookaburra. I had never heard of Kookaburra ever, um, and uh, so, I don't know, somehow I crossed my path, and I was delighted because now I'm going to have two Australians songs on the same piece of paper and i was very excited about that and um and then it turns out kookaburra is known throughout all girl scouts years ago i gave a girl scout uh, ukulele thing and there's this hilarious picture of me sitting on the tennis courts um and all these girls <laughs> around me in a big semicircle and they've all got i think we were playing uh, um, this exact song and uh and, I, and we're all just working our brains out sitting on that tennis court um up in the mountains down here south of denver so it's very cute um let's talk about the difference between g and g7 Okay, so when you go to a strum along, sometimes you're going to have Gs and sometimes you're going to have G7s. The G chord, obviously, as I just said, very important index finger here, middle finger, ring finger. G7 is just the opposite shape. This is a little triangle shape. On that one, you put index finger here, 
middle finger up here and ring finger there. That's very important. Um, the, the one reason why we like songs with G7 is when you're you playing in C, then you go to your A minor, then you go to F, and look how convenient G7 is after F, right? G7, F, G7, F, G7, F, G7. It's very, very comfortable um, chord, a little bit easier. I don't teach G7 first because I got to get them through the, the business of hating G. Um, and I always tell people it's okay to hate G chord for, for today, but we have B flat coming next week and you'll hate that way more. So just hate G a little bit. Um, hating G7, nobody ever hates G7. They're always like, oh, thank gosh. Okay. Um, and um, forgot to mention thumbs. Always, teachers, please don't let your students have your thumb up here. That is absolutely going to ruin their lives down the road. Thumb goes behind the neck right here don't don't let your students tell you otherwise it has to be there don't let your students do this right you've seen this one okay where they're playing it like this don't let your students run it down sideways like this and i get lots of little kids who want to do this where the thumb actually ends up underneath the fretboard don't let them do that okay thumb's got to be good and and it hangs out right behind your middle finger never see your thumb right behind the middle finger that's what's that's what you need to do for the future of playing easily down the road. Um, and so just be mindful when you're teaching or when you're showing other ukulele players, their thumb matters. And you will meet, there's a handful of ukulele players out there that are really dynamite and their thumbs up here like crazy. And people will point at them and say, see, you can do it. And I'm not telling you you can't do play ukulele if your thumb is stupid. I'm just saying you're making your life way, way harder. And especially if you're a teacher, don't let students make their lives harder. This is the one thing you can fix uh, that's going to make them have much better tonality, much better chording, much better much they'll be able to do much more complicated stuff down the road okay hey joyce about time you showed up <laughs> all right let's play kookaburra um we're gonna go top to bottom we're just gonna knock it out i want to point out when you get to measure or verse three kookaburra sits in the old gum tree chasing all the monkeys that he can see stop kookaburra stop kookaburra that's not a monkey that's me to me that is the greatest line in music ever written and if i was the composer of that i would have just dropped my pencil right there and i would have walked away i would never have written another line i think that is the greatest line in all of music okay here we go give me something fancy on your right hand if you can if you're newer just just try like heck to get the chords on in the at the right spot okay um let me give you the intro <laughs> Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bush is he. Laugh, Kookaburra, laugh, Kookaburra, gay your life must be. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, eating all the gum drops that he Guitar, guitar, let your, whatever you're holding, let the, <laughs> let this instrument ring all the way out. Okay, don't take your finger off the chord until the ukulele is completely done saying what it needs to say, and then you stand up, take your bows, get your wild adulation from your uh, the you know, throngs of people who are listening to you perform, and um, that's how we turn singing stuff into a little bit higher level stuff is really get by 
getting our cords in good shape. That's what you do in the beginning. And then as you become a more competent player, get your right hand stuff in order. I just played the exact same chords as everybody else would play on this, but I just did an arpeggio pattern. And I sound like I really know what I'm doing. Um, even though I haven't really done anything different than anybody else, I just had a smarter right hand. And so be, think, be mindful that this is where the music's going to come from. This is what type of music comes out of your ukulele. But this is the one that tells you uh, um, where, you know, the whole nature and the depth of the beauty of what you're trying to work on. All right, spent a lot of time on that because it's really foundational stuff. It's really important that you know uh, know that stuff. We are going to be moving to on toward the Bach here real quick. But before I run off completely from this thought process, in that piece of paper that you downloaded, is there's this little song here, uh, over the Rainbow by Israel Kamaka Ole. I should, will let you know, I've been teaching this a long time. I've been playing ukulele way before this song came out. Um, I don't ever, ever, ever teach this song. I make sure students have it because they feel like it's very, very important. But here's what I know about this song. You can't play like Israel and you can't sing like Israel. So don't even waste your time on it. Hand it out to your students and let them mess around with it. I wouldn't waste my time on it to save my soul. The one I do waste my time on just a little bit. On the back side of that, you got lava. I lava you. There it is. Uh, come on, camera. I know the camera is going to fail me here. Um, I love you. Uh, this is no, uh, chord for chord exactly what's on the recording on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and look up I love you, there's a little video of two volcanoes falling in love. It's super cute. Um, this is You can strum right along with that with this piece of paper and... Um, and sing and strum and have a great time. Um, the challenge with this is the guy who does the, 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 the ukulele part on that video either isn't trying very hard or isn't very competent. I can't tell one of the two which it what it is, um, but it's very uneven. The tone, the, the tempo is very uneven. The tonality is real iffy, and um, it's. I think I think he's trying to sound folksy or something, uh, but or he just might not be that great of a player. But in any event, um, it's not a piece that I recommend for to learn from. But it is one where you can practice getting your C, F, and G major and G seven on all at the same time. So if that's a chord, if those two chords. G or G7 are giving you some fusses, just go to YouTube um, and, and type in Lava or I Lava You, and, and then Anna, Anna, that Pixar song will come up, and um, it's a good chance to practice your G chord. So that's what I use that for. All right. Let's see. Janice, I had to have to go now, but Gukabur says, ha, 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 ha. Thanks, <laughs> Yeah, oh, Thank you, Janice, for being here. Absolutely delighted. Tell your Australian friends to come join us. We're going to do some American stuff next. No, we're going to do some German stuff next. Uh, Leon logged in from Germany yesterday. So, um, all right. Let's switch, switch gears completely. We're going to tackle box menuet today. Most of you guys have been here all week, um, and um, we're ready to, to finish up our, our epic roll through Bach. Okay. Um, Last week, we worked a little bit on Beethoven. This week, we worked a lot on Bach. Next week, I want us to we're gonna dial things back just a little bit. We're going to put in some Tin Pan Alley next week. I haven't quite finished all the sheet music, but I did post up on the website the stuff that we are going to be working on. The thing that I like, uh, the thing I don't want you to get into the notion of is that some music is better than other music, especially when it comes to this instrument. Um, what we want to be able to do is play from all of the eras. This thing works beautiful on Renaissance and early music. Uh, it's amazing the things you can do with it because loop music would, was becoming an, an important part of society at that point, and we're all set up for loot. Um, and it's also really just delightful for these these classical themes that aren't too complicated, that just you know that everybody knows the theme for. It really fits on here just just fine. Um, and then of course, as you go through all the history of music, I mean, a lot of that. Uh, eight, 19th century music is just so cute and delightful. Fits on here beautifully. Um, we're going to do some 20th century music, early 20th century, that Tin Pan Alley area, the 1920s ish. Is, uh, we're going to be doing some of that next week. Um, the songs that I'm putting out, I'm j I, I love them, and I think they're really delightful things you can learn from. Um, and then we will also, we're going to do some cowboy tunes just because, you know, I'm from Colorado, and so you got to know your cowboy stuff. Still, after all these years, 
here. The number one station here is a country station, which is so weird, but um, that's what we do. Um, so, so when we're talking about what type of music is important, some everybody's got their thing, right? Some most of you would be like, just teach me Beatles on the ukulele, and I will be perfectly happy. Um, some of you want, you know, Elvis, or you want, some, you know, you lot. We all want the music from our childhood, um, but I want you to be open-minded, right? I want you to be okay. I don't know anything about Tim Panelli, but Gary says it's good, so let's let's try some of that. Oh, I don't think you. I don't think Bach and Beethoven are going to work on ukulele. Oh my gosh, they sure do. Um, and uh, we're going to try. The, you know, I'm keep look. I keep looking for a 21st century song that doesn't suck, and um, I'm going to get that on ukulele <laughs> too. Um, but uh, but be open-minded. This is a very very versatile instrument. You know, it does all kinds of cool stuff, and um, for no bigger than it is, and no more expensive it is, and no more complicated than it is, you can really get a lot of great music out of it. And so I'm um, very uh, very pro ukulele as you can tell uh, the f when we're switching from Bach to next week which is uh, will be Tin Pan Alley week I'm going to go from this pretty complicated really thick kind of thinking and you know really focusing in on getting the timing right and all of this stuff that we like to do with classical music especially baroque music where we want eighth note eighth note eighth note until we die um and we're going to be looking at a much more uh fluid type of musicality in that in tin pan alley um and then the, and also next week i want to get us through the key of f we've been working on key um key of c and key of g quite a bit and what i want to do um the, the the beautiful thing about the key of F is it sounds beautiful on ukulele because you get this lovely F chord and the C7 is its best friend. They hang out. They sound amazing. This is just absolutely your soft kitty chords. Absolutely just the most delightful arrangement of chords you get. Here's where the problem is. Every time F is you're dealing with F, you're also going to get this lovely chord called B flat. Okay. And um, all of you who've been playing around a while know that you hate B flat. Um, some of you are going to play it with a partial bar here and this and that. But, uh, and I gave a lesson to a really advanced musician the other day um basically we covered how to do b flat better right um this is not one of the more pleasant things that come along with ukulele but it's something you can do and i'll give you lots of suggestions of how to how to be b flat and um and the other thing that i by covering the key of f next week um it really sets us up for lots of bar chord practice and all of that type of stuff and that is something most ukulele players really try to distance themselves from um it would be lovely if this was the only c chord you ever have to deal with but there's this same c chord in a bar chord which gives you a lot more horsepower than than this c chord and um so there are you're going to come into next week knowing, hey, I'm going to work a little bit harder on some things, but the music's going to be easier. So the technique's probably going to be a little more challenging than some of the stuff we've been working on this week, but the music's going to be a little bit more <laughs> convenient to get along with. So hopefully all of that stuff is making some sense to you. Uh, let me ask to double check the uh, qu questions here. Uh, oh, Janice checked out on us. Uh, very similar to the vihuela, which we use in our early music ensemble. Yeah, the, the vihuela is, um, it's like a baritone ukulele, I think, for better way of putting it. It's a, um, a, a not medieval, but really a renaissance guitar um, and really quite the uh, uh, same situation, whereas a smaller instrument that they've got a lot of horsepower out of. Um, kept humming Lover's Concerto by the Supremes and couldn't figure out why. Then I realized I was taking it from Bach Concerto. <laughs> Yeah, right. That's the other nice thing about getting to know music on the level that we're working at it is, is that you start to see all these connections and you start to figure out, you know what, Bach was working on this very basic fundamental level, just the same way that the kids in the garage band down the street are working on it. Um, the same way that, that John and Paul, George and Ringo were working on it, where you have this sort of common theme that goes through all of music. Um, and you're now part of that. That's, that's you know, it's when, when you decide, hey, I'm going to treat this instrument as an instrument rather than accompaniment just to singing. All of a sudden you can turn, you get to be a part of this community of musicians that have been go way back into medieval times of trying to get these vibrating strings to mean something and uh and that's where you're at today okay all right a couple things before we tackle this bad boy we're gonna play it top to bottom um box minuet and g the first thing i would tell you is that um printing front to back makes a whole lot of sense that way you get two pages at a time put a thing in here i have several musicians in my orchestra who are psychos and they have to be four pages wide and they hope and they do 
basically have said, hey, I'm not going to play any song that doesn't fit on four pages, right? Um, learn to turn pages. Here's how you lick your finger. Don't supposed to do that anymore. Bend your pages. Okay. Bend it. Okay. Then when it's time to turn the page, you reach up and grab this, and it's fast to turn. Okay. So do that. Or put some little those little sticky notes on the top there to make it easier to turn. And then put it in a three-ring binder. As long as you're hanging around with me, I strongly recommend everything goes in your book uh, alphabetically. All of the music you're working on, just put it in alphabetically. That way when I say, hey, let's work on whatever, you, you just have it in there alphabetically. Um, the other thing that I would recommend um, when you're setting up a book of things is if it looks like this, if it's got chords and lyrics and that's it, my suggestion is you take that and you just put it in the trash, okay? Because you're not going to be able to play at that level for very long happy, happily. That stuff is for singers. It's super fun. It's for when you get together with your ukulele group and you go, or you're getting ready to go to lunch and or when you get to, in, when you go to the bar and they have the ukulele thing at the bar. That's what they're going to give you. Super fun. Um, but it's near beyond that, right? Let's 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 be playing from real music. Let's be playing at that next level. Let's turn this into an instrument um, and not just an accompaniment to our singers. All right, get your paper out, ready to go. We're going to do each page, okay? Um, well, we may. I don't know. We may get sick of it. Um, I'm going to play the melody, and you're going to play the chords if you're newer. Or you're going to play the tough acts all the way through, okay? So what I want to do is um, I'm probably actually going to play the tough acts um, unless it gets too ugly. <laughs> and then I'm going to jump up in to play the melody. Um, but what I want you to do is find your way of playing. Okay, I'm going to try to go as slow as I can. We're going to go to the bottom of the page. We're going to ignore the repeats. Okay, you don't, on this particular arrangement, what I did is I took the first page, second page, third page, fourth page, and then I added the first page on at the end. And um, because of the work we did this week, you're supposed to play each page twice. It lasts about three and a half minutes if you do that. I played it earlier today, and it goes for a while. It's a long song. Um, so the other thing you can do is just get page one done, right? The page one is the famous part of this song, and so just learn to, to do page one. Um, but I think, what I, I think what I'll do is I will work my way through the tough acts, you work through whatever type of playing you want is making sense to you, and uh, let's see how we do. Okay, nice and slow. Try not to go fast, Gary. One, two, three. Seventeen, right? We skipped sixteen because we're going to just play everything one time. Um, hopefully, that's making sense to you. Hopefully, that's going okay. All right, we saw I'm finding a couple of places on those little bit harder chords. That's something. If I was thinking about presenting that to an audience, I'd want to clean up that stuff. I'd want to get it on a metronome. Uh, I've already got playing it. okay, right? Know where my notes are supposed to be. Get it on a metronome so you know about what speed you're playing, it, and then start pushing the speed of that metronome up. Let's go on to page two. One, two, three. No. 
so now again, we're done with page two. Everything's going great. I messed up a plenty, but I've got the idea where my mess ups were. And now when I go back to work on that, I just need to go work on those mess up areas and I don't need to work on the whole song. All right, we've made that transition through measure 34 and we're ready to go up to measure 35. Measure 35, we change to the minor feeling in the song. Okay, so we're going in G major the first time. Things are happy. Things are beautiful. Oh, my gosh. And we're really happy to be a, a classical musician. We are so much smarter than everybody else. And now we're going to go to the minor feeling where things are going to be so sad, right? All right. From the top, uh, measure 35. One, two, three. Sorry, guys, I apologize. Major 39, go. Slide six, seven. finish page three um, I found one spot obviously major 39 where I'm going to need to figure out where dark measure six is or fret six is and uh, um, and again we're just working our way through seeing if we're playing well enough to, to make any sense to ourselves at uh, whatever level you happen to be playing at. okay measure 52 let's give it a try one, five, six, five, seven. We're starting here. This crazy B flat chord. Okay. You use your regular B flat. This is your next level B flat. Okay. One, two, ready, play. Page four. Um, all of that is sounds sad because it's got that minor feel into it. You you want to be like, eh, I don't want to cry too hard. And then we go to the final page. Ready, play.
you might even give it a 10 just to wrap it up okay um i would say generally speaking the notes everything makes sense to me and so if i were thinking oh, i'm going to put this on stage or i'm going to put this out for somebody to be really impressed by me i would really dig into this this is a nice piece for ukulele um, i played the whole thing thumb down you can absolutely play the whole thing with your claw picking uh, i think it would sound probably more classical <laughs> um, and i think you'd have a really nice piece right this is this is really kind of high level stuff not top level but very high up there and I would say, um, you know, to, to take that piece and just really work on it and get where you're playing it well. Study techniques would be start at the end of it. Start at measure, I don't know, about measure 81 and just learn that for those four measures and then go back to 75 and learn those eight measures. If you start from the back, when you're strong, when you're working on a song, you will get stronger as you go along rather than the, what we typically do, which is start at the beginning and then we get weaker and weaker and weaker. So pl practice music backwards. I think it's the best thing that somebody told me years ago, and I've been doing it ever since then. When I want to really, really nail a song, um, I start at the end. Well, I go through and learn the song first, and then I go through to when I start to dig into my study practice and go backwards. All right. Your job this week, play or not this week, tonight, go home and play this thing. If you find mistakes, if you find typos, if you find things that don't make sense, send me an email. Hopefully um, you've got a piece of music you can spend the next two years working on and really turn it into something beautiful. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow at 4.30. We're going to cover my key of F arpeggio, I think is what I put on there. So uh, hopefully this is helpful. Again, send me emails if you have questions or comments, concerns, if you find typos. That I'm, the, I'm the editor for this stuff, so there's inevitably typos. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. You're staying out of... Out of, you're staying away from everybody, right? You're making sure that that's not something you're questioning. This is a great time to not be hanging out with other people. And luckily, we're ukulele players, so nobody wants to hang out with us anyway. So uh, um, just make sure that uh, you take that hard and stay home. Um, let's see. What else? Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, it's been a, it's been an all week thing, huh, Cat? It was really a lot of work, but I think it came out pretty nice. Awesome pitch. Uh, thank you, <laughs> KC. I uh, thank you for helping me with that, Ms. Cram. I really did need the work. Um, Bach was great. Love this piece. Yep, I love it too. All right, all right, guys. Have a wonderful day. I'm gonna end the stream. I'm gonna go teach. Uh, I think I'm teaching three blind mice to guitar players next. So uh, I love that part. So I have a wonderful night. Um, thank you for being here. Thanks for working so hard on this piece this week. Next week will be next week. Different, different hard things we have to work on, uh, and um, a little bit easier music, I think. So, all right, guys. Have a wonderful day, Joyce. Once again, thank you for a little. Uh, Whole block sweet, right, Joyce? <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to end the stream, you guys. Have a lovely night.